we I hail from the great state of Nebraska in the middle of the United States, and I am happy to come here today and answer your questions. You've already asked a lot of great questions, a lot of very spicy and interesting questions. So looking forward to having a conversation with you uh, about anything that you want to talk about. We can talk about the public offering. We can talk about DeFi. We can talk about why putting pineapple on pizza is a terrible mistake. Uh, we can talk about anything that you want to talk about. I'm looking forward to answering all the questions that you've got. Awesome. Thank you so much for joining us, JP. Let's get started with this. So some of the questions from the users are uh, recently Exodus went public. Congrats on that. This is something still that's relatively new in the crypto space. Companies going public, a wallet going public specifically. Could you tell us a bit more about this? How, how all of this happened and where it's heading? Yeah, so for us, we saw an opportunity here to uh, do do a couple of interesting things. So the first thing is is that Exodus is a wallet that holds that has over a million monthly active users, and we have billions of dollars of asset under management. We don't know the exact amount. We don't you know we don't play Big Brother, but we have billions of dollars of people storing their wealth inside of Exodus, and so we thought. What if we could create a platform where it, p companies could come and raise money directly inside of Exodus? And even better, given that it would be a crypto native platform, can we give a chance to essentially reward customers and those that are crypto native before those in Wall Street? Because the traditional path for a company to go public requires a company to register as an IPO on the NASDAQ or New York Stock Exchange, and that typically rewards Wall Street and those fat cat bankers. And so we thought, let's build a platform where we can be the first people to use the platform, do 100% cryptocurrency only public offering, and start with our customers, and start with those that are familiar and native to crypto. And so we're happy to say that we are the only company in the United States that has our stock digitally represented on the blockchain. And it's on Algorand. I know a lot of you are big Algo fans. I'm a big Algo fan. And so this is, this is a lot of the reasons why we did this. We wanted to reward our customers before Wall Street. And we wanted to prove that Exodus could be a viable way to raise money. Awesome. So where are these shares listed? You said Algorand. Is it on any particular platform? A new has asked, when can citizens from Poland begin purchasing shares in Exodus? So the, off the offering first started inside of Exodus Wallet. And so a person, it was, it was limited to 47 states first. We had this vision of doing a worldwide IPO and some regulatory issues slowed us down there and we wanted to move fast. And so we started with all states except Texas, Florida, and Arizona. And that was back in April. Now the stock is being traded on T0, so it's T0.com. And eventually we will bring it to other platforms. T0 supports a number of jurisdictions and countries outside the United States. I'll actually get this list here in a bit, um, but it is, it is, uh, it's still available to those outside the United States. Now, there are other platforms like uh, Securitized Markets. We're talking with them to potentially list, and that would allow us to uh, open up to even more countries. And then beyond that, there are other opportunities we're seeing which is really interesting right now is we're seeing the convergence of, I would say to some degree, we're seeing a convergence of traditional finance and cryptocurrency and crypto finance. Like if you look at, if you look at what Robin hood is doing, Robin hood has built, you know, a platform for people to trade stocks. You know, there's a lot, not a lot of, some people aren't Robin hood fans, 
but people they're building platform to trade stocks. But in addition to that, they're building a platform to trade crypto as well. And so you're seeing that convergence of crypto finance and traditional finance. And so I think in the course of this convergence, you will see crypto exchanges ultimately getting the appropriate licenses to list securities and stocks. And you'll see the trading of stocks like Exodus on crypto exchanges. Awesome. So during the call for Q3, the earnings call, you mentioned that a user would never have to leave Exodus at all for any of their crypto purposes. But what if someone wants to use a decentralized application or a DEX? How would they use it from Exodus? What I'm uh, asking is, if will there be something like a Wallet Connect or a MetaMask feature where people can just plug in to the browser and start using DeFi or NFT marketplaces? Yes, absolutely. So, so the long the long term vision is for Exodus to be a platform that encompasses everything in one unified interface. Right now, if you let's see, you put let's say you're going to yield farm on Uniswap or Orca or, or whatever it is, it's really difficult to know what your positions are across all different platforms. And so no platform yet to date has created an interface for you to track all of your positions across all DeFi platforms. In addition to that, communicate to you what your gains are. So th this is just the long-term vision that we make it so that Exodus actually becomes the internet of browser for the internet of money. And we don't see a future where most of these dApps are going to be continue to be published over and accessed through web browsers. Now that's still happening today. You've seen the rise of, of MetaMask. MetaMask has had great traction, but long-term we see a future where we create an interface and platform that you can do it all within Exodus and never have to leave. But that being said, we understand that some people may not want to use Exodus for everything, and that's okay as well. And yes, we will be supporting Wallet Connect to make that uh, a reality. Great. So another question is, we've seen, uh, we've yet to see 100% compatibility for hardware wallets, specifically Ledger and Trezor wallets in uh, Exodus. So does Exodus have any plan in this direction? to become a pioneering in connecting hardware wallets to DeFi platforms, to NFT marketplaces and such. Exodus currently supports the, the Trezor wallet. And no, we do not have any additional plans to add any more hardware wallets. The Trezor, the user experience of a Trezor is, is pretty good compared to, I think, some of the other hardware wallets out there. And so I personally think that a Trezor wallet is adequate, but long-term, I think really when it comes down to it, for the mainstream, mainstream consumers will be looking for a, an experience that blends the security of their phone and the security of a desktop computer. And you can combine it into a, a you can think of it like a decentralized 2FA style solution using certain cryptographic methods that uh, are pretty advanced that we can solve things like that. So no, to summarize, we don't have any additional plans to add any more hardware wallet capacity outside of what we already have with the Trezor. Great, so what are some big features or changes that we could expect to see in 2022 from Exodus that will uh, change the way the users experience the wallet? Oh, 2022 is going to be an exciting year for us. I so I, as I as I announced on the on the earnings call, one of the the things that we're really excited about. So we have this FTX integration in progress. Today we mm -hmm. just shipped FTX integration support on the mobile app. In addition to that, we support uh, we we shipped Lightning Network support. But into 2022, 
We're looking to support additional NFT capabilities. So right now, Exodus on the mobile supports NFTs on Solana. And we're really looking forward to building premium DeFi experiences. So the next experience that's going to be released is going to be released on December 17th. And that's going to be the Magic Eden Marketplace, which is one of the biggest market, Solana market, NFT marketplaces. And so that experience is going to come to Exodus Mobile. And that will give customers the ability to buy and sell NFTs directly inside of Exodus. Now, into 2022, the biggest thing that we're trying to figure out is how can we make Exodus the go-to app or wallet for anybody to experience Web3? And so what that means is we're, we're definitely, definitely going to support Wallet Connect. We're probably going to investigate building a browser plugin to compete with MetaMask. But at the end of the day, again, it all comes back to DeFi and the growth of DeFi is, is so amazing. I myself have turned into a big Solana DeFi degenerate, and I think there's a big opportunity to build experiences for Solana and other high-performance chains like Algorand. Great. But how about ledger connectivity? I, I suppose a lot of people use ledgers as well. So is this something you're not at all uh, looking to, looking forward to? No, no, we have no plans to support ledger mm -hmm. uh, in DeFi, ledger in Exodus at, at all. Great. So uh, you mentioned earlier that Exodus has 7.6 million worth of Algorand total tokens. And are you also excited about Solana, the whole Solana ecosystem, especially the NFT marketplace, Magic Eden? So in your opinion, what would, how would these two platforms compete when ETH 2.0 launches, Ethereum 2.0 launches? And, uh, you know, especially with the whole layer two scaling theme that is coming out of late. Yeah, so we were we were interested in in DeFi experiences back in 2020, right before the summer of DeFi, summer 2020. We were really really interested in building mainstream consumer experiences, and so we set out. We built an integration on Exodus Desktop with Compound Finance, and so we started with that. Then we set out to build another experience that allows people to wager in sports using SportX. And what happened was, as you guys, you guys all know and remember, the, the summer of DeFi caused the Ethereum fees to go crazy high to the point of, you know, $15, $20 or so to actually participate in DeFi. And that's just insane, especially when we think about building mainstream experiences. So over time, what we've been thinking about is like, okay, how can we build a mainstream DeFi experience? And it just so happened that Solana and Algorand have been building performant L1s. And you've seen the rise of Solana and, and the rise of Algorand, but Solana in particular has built a chain that is really performant. And that's why I think so many dApps and developers are moving to Solana. So when we think about how do we compare this to Ethereum 2, Ethereum 2 is, in, in, for the actual performance of Ethereum 2, the sharding is still a ways away. So I know we have merging that's going to come first. That's predicted in Q1 or Q2 of 2022. But that doesn't give any performance increases. Then we have sharding that's supposed to come later 2022, and that's going to give some performance increases, but still not to the degree of uh, sharding plus, plus rollups. And so... I think it's going to be years before Ethereum actually gets the full scalability deployed. But that by that point in time, I would expect that both Solana and Algorand are, are far ahead of Ethereum. And it may be too late, but, but we'll see. Nice. Interesting. So what's your view on this whole metaverse boom that we're seeing right now, especially since the start of this year and 
probably yeah, since Feb or March, NFTs, Metaverse has just exploded. What's your view on this space that's just developing? And will we see Exodus dive into the whole Metaverse? Will we see Exodus support projects like Sandbox? Or, you know, Exodus can have its own Metaverse. What are the plans in this regard? Yeah, I think what's what's really interesting is that a lot of companies are taking interest in the metaverse. So, you know, of course, the obvious one is is Facebook renaming to Meta. It's interesting that they're they're moving their company directions towards the metaverse. But to me, the metaverse is still really early, and nobody really knows what mm-hmm. or can define what the metaverse is. So, yes, there's experiences like Decentraland. There's experiences like Sandbox. I personally. Uh, I think like six months ago, sat down and played with the central land and saw that there's a lot of abilities here for the future of, of social connection and actually building experiences that people haven't seen yet, but it's still really early. And so when we think about these things, we just think about how can we make it easy for our customers to access and use these things. And so when I was looking at Decentraland, the biggest thing that came to mind for me was what if we were to build an integrated Decentraland product right inside of Exodus so that a mainstream consumer can just sit down and just start playing Decentraland as easy as if you were playing Minecraft. And so that's how we kind of think about these things. But I think the metaverse is, is again, still very, very early and uh, remains to be seen what, what's going to happen there. True, yeah. it's just building maybe 10% completed so far. Yeah, Let's talk absolutely. About... Great, great. Let's talk about the intersection of politics and crypto. Now, this is something that's been a hot topic throughout this year. What's your view on the infrastructure bill that has come up and uh, just been passed into law as well? It has some crypto provisions. How do you see this affecting cryptocurrencies, investors, NFTs, D5. What's the view on this? Well, I think I think the United States has an opportunity here to lead the world in crypto innovation. And because of what happened in, in, in China, right? So China decides that they're going to ban mining, which I think the future will look back at this moment and say that was a colossal mistake. And so now most of the mining is happening in the United States. And so the United States has an opportunity here. And I think that the politicians have made mistakes here with this infrastructure bill, specifically regarding what we mentioned with crypto and then treating the way that they're they're wanting to treat DeFi and, and smart contracts and decentralized applications and saying that let's treat those as service providers as if they were an exchange that that had to file you know 1099s and, and things like that but uh i think you know this this language will get corrected there's a lot uh, this is not no longer a small industry you know we we're talking about a three you know close to a three trillion dollar industry now and i think that this language will get corrected uh, i think it's promising that in a conversation i think this was yesterday or the day before when uh, Janet Yellen was specifically pressed on um, how FinCEN or, or what the FATF regulation should be uh, regarding um, DeFi and, and self-custodial mm-hmm. products, they, they or she mentioned that it should follow, follow the guidance of FinCEN, which is that self-custodial products fit into a different class of, of regulation. So at the end of the day, I think the United States has to step up here and and fix the language in the infrastructure bill, or I think there's a big risk of innovation being pushed outside the United States, and I think that that would be a big problem. So, uh, But I think it'll get corrected. Great. So are you also simultaneously worried that politicians would eventually put an end to non-custodial wallets? This is something that's been already proposed in few countries. The FATF has also you know, issued guidance against this. So is this something that uh, could possibly be implemented in the future 
if you're not, what makes you so sure that this wouldn't happen in the United States and Europe as well? No, I, I don't. I think at the end of the day, like, look, we're, we're talking about cryptography here and we're talking about software to hold cryptography. And I just, I think it'd be a colossal mistake to end this notion of self-custodial wallets, even if they, even if they wanted to, the proliferation of open mm -hmm. source makes that near impossible. But given, again, Janet Yellen's co uh, comments and how FATF should be looking and considering treating uh, unhosted wallets and self-custodial wallets and that they should treat them as the same exemption that, that FinCEN gives self-custodial wallets. So mm -hmm. I, I just, I'm not, I'm not worried about it. Great. So recently, uh, another thing happened. The FBI seized a crypto wallet that was used for being uh, that for used for uh, ransomware payments, and it was linked to Exodus wallet. And uh, regarding this, did law enforcement reach out to Exodus on this specific incident or similar incidents in the past regarding ransomware payments? No, so we were we 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 were actually just candidly we we were surprised to see as well that this from the FBI document that it was an Exodus wallet. So the FBI never reached out to us about this case, mm -hmm. and yes, we have gotten inquiries in the past from law enforcement agencies, but given that as a self custodial wallet, we don't have information on our customers and the people right. that use our software the people the the people that have the information so like the the obvious exceptions are that if you participated in our public offering securitize and a part of securitize they have some of that information but we personally as a company access we, we do not have any of that information as a self-custodial wallet Great. So uh, I've seen that in your career page on Exodus, you mentioned that all employees get paid in Bitcoin. Is this post tax or paid in full? How does uh, how does conversion to tax? How does conversion to fiat work from the payment they receive in BTC? Given all the tax issues, and is there plans to let employees choose payment in part BTC and Bad fiat payments. To my knowledge, today I I think we are the only company that mandates that if you work at Exodus, you have to be paid in Bitcoin. But this has a nice filtering effect that everybody that works at Exodus has a stake in the game. They right. care yeah. about what we're doing. They care about Bitcoin. They care about cryptocurrency. So the way that it works is salaries are actually denominated in U.S. dollars. So just to make just the math really simple, let's say you join Exodus, say your, your salary is, I don't know, let's just I'm pick a number, let's say 100K. And let's say that taxes of withholding taxes are, uh, let's say, 30 percent. So that would be 30K withheld. And so then you'd be paid 70K in Bitcoin over the 12 pay periods in a given year. So it's, it's, it's pretty straightforward. Everybody really seems to love it and we have no plans to change it. And like I said, to work at Exodus, you have to take your salary in Bitcoin. There, there's no option here. Now, that being said, there have been cases where like just recently we, we have uh, people, we have employees in China. And so we're trying to figure out how can we in 2022 help them still receive a salary in Bitcoin while still maintaining uh, compliance with, with Chinese law. And so that poses some challenges, mm -hmm. but we think that we can still do it by helping these people set up um, companies in, in jurisdictions that, uh, where it is still uh, allowed. Great. So that's pretty cool that payment is only in BTC. So with the rapidly vast growing space, there are a lot of advancements every almost every day. 
how does Exodus prioritize wallet support for projects? So if a new project wants to integrate into like Exodus, how does Exodus choose which one to prioritize first? What are the guidance here? So first of all, it really comes, let, let's talk about uh, assets because those are the, the most common requests. And assets, choices, and prioritization really co just comes down to market cap. I mean, if an asset is high in the market cap, we will typically integrate it. Um, there have been some exceptions in the past where we, we put a little bit more like uh, judicious research into it. So for example, uh, IOTA, HEX, we, um, you know, as those things, those assets have climbed the market cap, we've done more research just to find out, does this make sense? Do our customers ultimately want to use this? And uh, should, should we integrate it? So it typically comes down to market cap is how we think about adding assets. Now, when it comes to other features, this is a mix of how do we think this will build up for a mainstream experience and are our, are our customers asking for it? So in the case of like NFTs, you know, people are really interested in NFTs and it makes sense for us given that we are, you know, a design driven company. We have a, you know, a beautiful user interface and NFTs are, are a, a visual, like a visual assets. It makes sense, especially since our customers are asking for it to make NFT support a priority. So it really comes down to customers asking for it. And then again, thinking about how can we create the best mainstream self custodial experience? Great. So another user had asked a specific question about staking Tezos, baking, as it's called in Tezos. Will you stop using Everstake, which apparently charges two to three times the fee as compared to other bakers and does not provide either insurance or a comparably high ROI. I, that was when I read that question and saw that question, that one was, 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 was news to me uh, that uh, Everstake is, is three times higher than some of the other competitors. What we will do is we will look into that and, and I'll post back on that thread as to what the status and outcome is. But at this time, we have no plans to get off or change Everstake, providers from Everstake. And the reason for that is we, you know, people have asked us, hey, will you make it so that we can choose which staking provider for this asset and we can have a choice? And the reason that we don't is because we're trying to think of, you know, the ideal mainstream consumer experiences. And so at the end of the day, somebody, if you think about somebody that's just starting out on their cryptocurrency journey and they're like, oh, this asset, it's going to pay me 10% or 6% or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. Having a choice is a, more friction to just starting to earn that six, seven or 8%. And that's why we don't offer that. Now I understand there, there are concerns, possible concerns with with decentralization. And so, you know, one way to potentially remedy that is behind the scenes, maybe we cycle through different staking providers. But at the end of the day, again, it all comes down to creating a friendly, mainstream consumer experience and, and more choice in that regard with the staking just complicates it. Awesome. So another question is, why was BTC onboarding removed from the platform? Will it be coming back at all? And uh, should Exodus focus more as beginner's wallet or for more advanced users offering wider features? So as far as uh, Bitcoin and, and fiat onboarding, I, I thought that we had one of the best fiat onboarding experiences. Mm -hmm. If you had Apple Pay and you had Exodus on your iPhone. In other words, you could download Exodus and you could have Bitcoin in your wallet in less than two minutes. And so that was a wonderful mainstream consumer experience. However, behind the scenes, it wasn't sustainable. We had experienced chargeback risk or chargebacks on the actual uh, people purchasing Bitcoin and so we, we had to pull it so we could create a more sustainable 
solution. And so, yes, we are looking to bring these features back. We will likely partner with uh, FTX and, and other companies to actually bring these experiences to our customers. But um, we understand that at the end of the day, to get into cryptocurrency, if you don't have cryptocurrency, having a, an easy, convenient fiat on-ramp makes that a more mainstream friendly experience. And so when we think about building products, we think about long-term for the mainstream and, and less so for the advanced technical user, but we understand that there are steps to actually get to a, a mainstream mm -hmm. consumer experience. Definitely, yeah. So apart from uh, fiat onboarding and uh, talking about regulatory issues, what are the biggest challenges facing the whole industry today? Purely from a regulatory standpoint, we definitely had the infrastructure bill. But apart from that, what, what are the likelihoods that of something new coming up in terms of regulatory that industry participants, especially wallet providers, service providers could face in the coming years? Yeah, I, I mean, I would say it really comes down to the, the regulatory concerns are, are definitely there. I mean, they like as an industry, you know, we have to stand up and fight and make sure that our industry is protected. So there, there's no doubt about that. Um, I think when it comes down to governance tokens and DAOs, we have to figure out how to make those work in the uh, I know as, as much as we hate it, but we got to there's this still we live in, in the world and we got to make sure we figure out how to make DAOs actually work in the modern judicial systems. And so Wyoming has done a great job there in leading the way. But I think more states and more countries are going to have to figure out how to enable DAOs to come in and join. So that's going to be a, a big issue as well. But then I think one of the, the second things is, is that it's still very hard to use cryptocurrency. And more than that, it's really hard to safely store cryptocurrency and being the custodian of your own assets in such a mainstream way that you don't have to worry about it. So there's a bit of a paradox there. Like we, we gotta make, we have to make self custody so easy and empower people to have that responsibility while actually not feeling like they have that responsibility. And that's a really difficult thing to do. And I think, you know, this is one of the, the challenges that we set out to solve, and there's a lot of work to be done there. Definitely, yeah. So uh, on similar lines, there's another question, which we also, we recently had Ledger as well on our talk, and we had the same question to them. Is there any plans to incorporate uh, something like uh, inheritance feature or something like, let's say a person using a wallet uh, suffers an accident or is unable to use access as coins? Is there something like an inheritance feature that, that could be specifically supported by the wallet so that people known to that person could access their, his funds? There are no plans currently, but it's something that We've, we were thinking about. So what we're trying to solve first is we're trying to make it so easy that people don't have to think about even storing their 12 words. And, and you know, there's technology like social backups, like this notion of, you know, you, you trust, you trust your friends, you trust your family, uh, the odds of all of them colluding. And then you also having like an extra passphrase in combination with all that can help mm -hmm. to make it so that as a as a consumer, when you download a wallet and get started or somebody invites you to download a wallet, you don't have to think anymore about like, oh, I better go write down this 12 word phrase. Like you could still do it if you wanted to, but you don't have to think about it. But you could expand upon that concept and you could create a world where if let's say you uh, pass away or something happens unfortunately to you, you could create a world where potentially if maybe you don't access your wallet for a year or two years, or something like that, three or five of your family members may be able to get access to your funds with a special key of some sort. So it's something that we've thought about, but there's nothing strictly on the roadmap right now to actually solve 
the inheritance issue just yet. Awesome. So I'm going to start inviting users from the audience. Maybe you can have a few questions. But before that, some housekeeping rules. Once you're on the stage, you could just unmute yourself and ask your question and then uh, mute yourself back again. So JP, uh, there's another interesting question from a user. What do you think of the whole NFT space? So for a large number of people, the whole thing looks like just scammy, weird stuff. Is there a future for NFT and what would it take to break the current trend that NFTs are just, you know, either money laundering or scammy artwork? Yeah, so I, I guess I haven't heard the the money laundering aspect with NFTs yet. Now I've heard, I've seen the memes obviously with art, uh, but not not so much with NFTs. Um, so I think that it, it's cool. So let's start with this. It's really cool to see the trends of some of these celebrities embracing NFTs and then making it as a part of their social experience, social profile experiences on you know Twitter and whatnot. And I think that's an interesting way to help to bring this stuff mainstream. But I, I think what's going to happen here is I think, you know, younger generations like Gen Z are going to embrace NFTs more so than older generations because younger generations grew up online. I mean, the amount of time people spend on making their Instagram profile really nice like shows that people want to spend time online and be in their online presence is important. Now, when you bring NFTs into this and this gives you, allows you to signal status or that you're a part of some tribe or collective, that is even more powerful for people and people care about that. So I think that's going to help the trends, but to kind of even step outside of some of the, if we were to call it the kind of the weird art space of NFTs, I mean, anybody that's ever sold a house or bought a house knows how painful that process is. And there's no reason that that process, the, the whole signatures and the docs, the titles couldn't be wrapped up in an NFT. And it's as simple as, okay, you want to buy this house? No problem. You got money in your digital wallet, or you can take out a loan in your digital wallet like Exodus, and then you just press one button to sign that, uh, that NFT, and the other party signs the NFT, and then the title is transferred. And so I, I think that'll happen, but we're probably still a decade or two away from that. So we have a couple of users here with us. Uh, what makes it feeling? Do you want to uh, ask any questions? Feel free to unmute and... Uh... Hey, uh, JP, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Hey, big fan of Exodus. I've uh, been using the wallet for about almost five years. Um, I've asked this question a few times in the subreddit, and I heard what you said about hardware wallets. Um, I love the Trezor integration. What's the roadmap for adding additional assets uh, with the Trezor compatibility, specifically like Monero, for example? First of all, let me thank you for being a, a loyal customer and fan for five years. I mean, that's 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 awesome. It's uh, I mean that that you've been here with us since since the early days. So I, I appreciate that. So in terms of the roadmap for the Trezor and adding new additional assets, we haven't prioritized that as you've probably seen. And this the the honest raw honest answer is that adding more assets on the Trezor is not a priority yet because we're still building up our asset team to add more assets in this wallet itself. So for example, you've probably seen Avalanche, Terra Luna, they've climbed up fast into you know top 15. And so we're putting our resources there to add those assets in, into the wallet. That being said, I understand there's a lot of Monero fans. I personally am a very big Monero fan. And I, I've seen this, this feature request come in quite, quite often as well. So I appreciate you asking it here too. And uh, I will, for 2022, we will look at the roadmap and we will look into adding additional assets on the Trezor, specifically Monero. And we will post in our uh, Exodus subreddit 
which is our forward slash Exodus wallet, we'll post there. Uh, I'll commit right now. We'll post there by the end of January. I will post about Monero and Trezor wallet support if we're going to do it or not. I'm not, so I'm, to be clear, I'm not committing that we are going to do it, but I will give you my word that we will investigate doing it. And I will post in the R forward slash Exodus wallet subreddit on by January, by the end of January on whether we're going to do this or not in 2022. Thank you so much. Awesome. Hey, uh, uh, Scipio Nation, uh, do you have a question? Yeah, thank you so much. Can you guys hear me? Yes, yeah, I can perfect. hear you. Okay. Um, I have a, a, a broader question about cryptocurrency as a whole and its impact on the world. And I just would love to hear your sort of inside take on it. It seems to me that the um, every time I look into it, that the energy usage of cryptocurrency is extreme and growing larger every day, exponentially so. As someone who's like really involved in the cryptocurrency space, how do you justify that amount of energy usage, um, especially when we're facing uh, as serious climate issues as we are? I think it's a really important problem. And I think that something that if cryptocurrency can't find an answer to, um, cryptocurrency is going to have a very difficult path forward. So I'd love to hear your thoughts on that. Yeah, I appreciate you bringing that to the table. Just to be clear, are, I'm assuming that you're referring to proof of work cryptocurrencies and, and not so much proof of stake, or are you referring to other cryptocurrencies? Just to be clear. From, from what I've seen, uh, proof of stake is, is much better than proof of work, but um, it's still just sort of extra compute power um, and, and still more than uh, sort of traditional online banking. Although I, I might be wrong and I have heard that proof of stake is a lot better, but I am pro primarily talking about proof of work. Yes. Okay. Yeah. It's, it's my understanding. Like the proof of stake cryptocurrencies are, are, are more efficient on the, on the energy side of things. Uh, now when it comes to like, let's just take a, a Bitcoin and, and given that is the biggest proof of work currency and knowing that Ethereum is transitioning from proof of work to proof of stake. Let's just focus the conversation a bit on Bitcoin here. And so I think what we're seeing today is that, yes, a lot of energy is being used to secure the Bitcoin network. And I, I thought about this somewhat. And, and one of the things that I thought about is, okay, so this energy is being used to secure what can be seen as the world's best store of value and possibly the future of, of money. And so we have to ask ourselves, compared to what? And what we're seeing right now is, you know, if you think, of, if you think about like uh, the Federal Reserve and how the Federal Reserve just endlessly prints money and that a lot of governments will print money around the world to finance issues and finance wars. And, and so you have to ask yourself, I think, compared to what? These governments will print money nonstop so they can accomplish their objectives. And so that's the first thing, what kind of the first thought comes to mind is we have to ask ourselves compared to what. And the second thing is, is that when it comes to uh, like, my, the, like, like the oil fields and the gas flares, like gas flares are normally considered uh, energy inefficient and and uh, energy pollutants and if you can harness that and you can convert it into bitcoin by mining bitcoin you save yourself from polluting and you end up storing that energy as money and so it interests me in that regard is that i think we actually can get to a point where bitcoin Mining is ultimately powered by clean energy and, and the offset or byproducts of some of the energy uh, that is used by, by coal. So long term, I think there is, is promise that the world can solve these problems. But I, I really go back to compared to what when it comes to the energy usage, usage of Bitcoin and compared to the energy usage to print money 
and finance some of these wars that are happening. I appreciate you answering the question. Thank you. Awesome. Hey, uh, VD, uh, do you have a question as well? Please feel free to unmute yourself and uh, ask your question. Hey, your voice is a little bit low. Uh, uh, you're still not audible. Are you speaking near the microphone or could you just? No, I can't hear you. Yeah, we still can't hear you. Uh, hey, Yellow Boy USA, do you have a question as well? Uh, feel free to unmute and ask your question. Uh, hello, can you hear me just fine? Yeah, perfect. Oh, uh, hi, JP. Thank you for uh, doing this talk today. Uh, I'd like to say that the apps are really great. Uh, I've been with Exodus since 2017. So also one of those dinosaurs in the crypto space. Um, I have quite a few questions, but the first is, I understand that you guys get a lot of uh, just coin requests, like L1 coins. Uh, I would just like to ask if Harmony will be integrated anytime in 2022 or if if it's on the roadmap. Hey, thank you for joining us. And again, thank you for uh, being a customer since 2017. And you're right. It is, it's, it's wild to hear that 2017 is a dinosaur in the crypto space, but that is, that is so true. So to answer your question related to uh, Harmony on the roadmap, it is not currently on the roadmap uh, for 2022. That isn't to say that it won't be on the roadmap or could not be in the roadmap. That could definitely change, but it is not currently on the roadmap. What, for 2022, we're really going to focus on, again, creating these, these top-notch, mainstream, consumer-friendly DeFi experiences. And so that will mainly be, you know, at Wallet Connect and other integrated experiences. Uh, Luna will definitely make it in the wallet in 2022. And then Avalanche, of course. Um, other assets uh, that, that enter in to the top 25, we'll start to look at those. Um, but uh, right now, at this moment, there is no plans to, to integrate Harmony in 2022. But again, that could change. Oh, okay. Uh, thank you. And one last question for me. Uh, so how about the plans to integrate uh, tokens in the future, like uh, assets on Algorand or just Binance Smart Chain tokens? Yeah, great question. So we want to build Exodus in such a way that, uh, especially when it comes to these tokens on these networks, uh, like, like you said, Algorand, Solana, Ethereum, ERC-20 tokens, we want to build Exodus in such a way that we don't even have to support them. Exodus just supports all of them by default. And uh, we're still a little ways away from that, but that is something that we will do in 2022 so that you can just open up Exodus. And if we support the, the L1, the, the, the base blockchain, whether it's Algorand, Solana, Ethereum, Binance Smart Chain, whatever it is, that you can just use the tokens natively on top of, of those chains without actually us having to do anything to support those. So that will be coming in 2022. Uh, thank you so much. But uh, I hope you don't mind, but I do have another question about, uh, has it been uh, ever been considered within the company to say delist a coin from the wallet uh, for instance, uh, NEM or the Teka XEM, I think that project is dead, is it not? I don't know if, uh, I, know, I know which coin you're talking about. I don't know if it's dead. I personally hate the idea of delisting, although we, we have done it in the past, uh, especially for coins that uh, have no, no usage anymore. Um, so we, we have done it, but I, I want to get away from that. I want to make Exodus built in such a way that it really works without our intervention. And then you can even use any coin that you want to use. So back to your question about Harmony, you could, uh, you could imagine, uh, like a, consider like a, a plugin system or something like that. So you download Exodus and we don't actually have to support any of the coins. The plugins of, from these developers themselves, they can just be shipped and you can just get that support from the developers. And so that's what we'll be looking to do, but 
to delisting to delist coins, uh, I, I would like to avoid doing that if we can. But we will, of course, and sometimes do it. Oh, thank you so much, uh, JP. I think the plugin idea is really powerful, and I look forward to using it in the future. Um, thank you for answering all my questions. You bet. Thank you. Awesome. Hey, uh, Hamji, do you have any question as well? Uh, you could please unmute yourself and ask a question. Hey, Crafty, uh, do you have a question as well? Hey, uh, yeah, can you guys hear me question? okay? Yeah, I can hear you, Crafty. Hey, uh, VD, just hold on. Uh, once Crafty is done with the question, uh, you could ask your question then. Crafty, okay. yeah, please go on. Okay, perfect. Well, I, again, I know everyone said this, but I super appreciate you guys doing this. I've been uh, using Exodus from since I think 2017. Uh, ever since I changed my background to Argyle, I was like, okay, this is the wallet for me. And it sounds really funny now, but it, it was important at the time. Um, following kind of the uh, the trends, especially with the Ethereum space and uh, in Exodus's 2022 strategy of you know, assisting onboarding people into the DeFi space. Uh, another big interest that I know that I have is uh, having to uh, having to do with staking. And I know that there's more protocols like uh, Lido and uh, more recently with with Rocket Pool that has allowed people to start uh, participating in staking uh, while still making it available for them to uh, participate in DeFi. Um, is that something that that you guys have looked into in terms of uh, having that be part of the overall Exodus system? Yeah. So uh, first of all, Leanne, let me thank you for being a customer for a long for since 2017. And and when you talk about those custom backgrounds, yeah, that's a blast from the past. And a lot of people don't even know that Exodus Desktop has that ability. And and at some point in time, we would like. Uh, to create a future where, you, you know, I just spoke about this plugin system. You could Im imagine a world where you can just download different themes or designs, uh, custom designs, custom themes to to make Exodus look the way that you want as well. So uh, that's that's not on the, the roadmap, but that is something that we would like to enable in the future. Now, to your question about Rocket Pool or liquid staking protocols like uh, like uh, Lido or Lido or um, Yes, we are. We are actually actively talking about that now because uh, you know Ethereum two staking requests are coming in a lot, and we want to enable that feature for our customers uh, because a lot of people. I mean, who wouldn't want if you're holding ETH? You know, who wouldn't want to earn five uh, percent from that or, or whatever the the current rate is? It, it makes a lot of sense to do that. So the the issue that we're grappling with is. How do we build this in such a way that we communicate that there is some risk, especially in the, the case of uh, Lido or Lido, um, that there, there is some risk because you are putting your money, you know, in a, a smart contract. And, you know, if that smart contract gets hacked, you know, we have to consider how to communicate that risk to our customers. Now, I know Rocket Pool is emerging as a competitor that actually, I, I, it's my understanding, has uh, less risk than, uh, than Lido. Um, and so we're, we're looking at that. Uh, we know that the Rocket Pool has APIs. And so our team is, is talking to them to see what we can build there and, and how we can bring uh, ETH to staking to our customers. Awesome. I appreciate it. And then just as a follow-up, I know a lot of us are asking you, questions about, hey, when are you going to support this? But is there anything that you need from uh, the rest of us as kind of community members uh, to help empower Exodus? I, I really appreciate you asking that. I, I, I think just being active and going to our subreddit uh, and, and just participating, put your, put your feature requests there uh, is, is the best thing that, that you can do because I, I actively read our subreddit. We have a great moderation team on our subreddit and and they are paying attention to all of these requests that are coming in and so uh, more conversation that happens there more dialogue uh i will see it uh, my, my co-founder the co-founder of exodus daniel who leads up uh, the creative team he will see it and so 
that's the best thing that you can do is go into our subreddit and uh, have conversation there and put your, your feature request there. And that will really help us out. Awesome. I appreciate it. Awesome. Thank you, Crafty, for your question. Hey, uh, VD, do you want to ask your question? You could please unmute yourself. Okay. Uh, can you hear me? Yeah, perfect. Please go on. Okay. Thanks. Um, hey, uh, JP, I have also been an Exodus user since 2017, and it's, it's interesting. Um, it's also crazy, like, the how the wallet has evolved. And um, I have a couple of questions, I think maybe two. Um, seeing that extensions have become you know, quite popular, um, are there any plans of making like an Exodus Chrome extension? Thank you again for being a customer so long. I appreciate it. And you'll be happy to know that, yes, we are looking into figuring out how to create the, this best experience. And so as a part of that conversation, an extension is under active consideration. Uh, we think that uh, the extensions today uh, in terms of user experience, leave a lot to be desired. And we think that we have an opportunity to come in and actually do something potentially different here with the extensions and make it very seamless, make the whole DeFi experience just, just easy and seamless. And so, yes, that is the part. There is not actively on the roadmap at this exact moment saying we are going to make an extension, but that is a big consideration as to part of the strategy here. And if we decide to do that, it will definitely happen in 2022. Okay. And um, my, uh, thank you for answering. My second question is, um, uh, I saw the Exodus uh, stock ad on the wallet. Um, I wanted to ask, have you guys gone public yet? And if so, like, how does one get an Exodus stock? Like what are also the benefits of like holding one? So Exodus went public through a, a, a new regulatory framework from the SEC called the Regulation A offering. And so Exodus is uh, a public company in the sense that this stock is available for both accredited and non-accredited investors to purchase. And uh, we publish our financials on the SEC website uh, every, every uh, quarter. And so just like public companies. So to our stock can be purchased on t0.com. That's where people will buy our stock. And the, the main benefit is that a person is buying stock and, and it's not just a crypto token. This is actually real equity in a company and is digitally represented again on, on Algorand. And so that opens up a lot of interesting possibilities. The fact that we are the only company in the United States that has our common stock digitally represented on a blockchain means that we could do things like NFT drops to stockholders. We could create a loyalty program for stockholders and, and do we could pay we could pay dividends out with USDC all on the blockchain to really demonstrate this technology and how cool this technology is. And there's no other company out there that's doing this. And so we're, we're trying to figure out what is the best course of action and what we want to do here. But I would like to get to a world where we do these things, where we blend loyalty and equity and we blend it in one package and we make those that are holders of extra stock, we could do some, like I said, some, some really cool things there. So I also see a future where, as I mentioned earlier, you know, we're seeing traditional finance and crypto finance kind of merge together. I think this will also happen, you know, given that with, with DeFi and uh, traditional finance. So traditional finance, so we're the first company. Okay, more companies are going to come along. Well, everybody knows how easy it is to use, you know, everybody that's in this space knows how easy to use a, uh, an exchange like Uniswap. So you could imagine a future where you could exchange any digital asset of value for any other digital asset of value. You could, you could exchange NFTs for Exodus stock, Exodus stock for Bitcoin, Bitcoin for uh, digital representations of barrels of oil, what, whatever it is. You can imagine an exchange that unifies everything in one package and uh, that, that can happen now. The technology is here, it just has to be built. Oh, okay. 
Um, I do have, I guess, maybe one one final question, um, which is: Are there any plans on implementing the, an option to use like the Lightning Network in Exodus? Yes, Lightning Network was actually just shipped today, and you can you can get <laughs> that in Exodus Mobile. Oh, uh, uh, and final final question, I promise. Um, do you guys have uh, you know like any uh, light um, themes for um, themes for the wallets? Because I find that sometimes uh, the available themes are mostly like really dark, and I do stream my hack. Good question. We do not have that today, but if you know when when we can get to a world of building like a a, a custom theme system, I could see that coming. But uh, we we do not have any any light themes today. Okay, thank you so much for answering my question. You bet. Uh, admin, I believe I'm done. I'm I'm happy to to jump in and and say uh, who who has questions next. Uh, Jam Hay. I think he's also done. So uh, oh. we'll just wrap up uh, with one final question. JP, what knowledge would you pass on to the latest wave of investors who are entering the space, both investors as well as builders, companies that are entering crypto? What knowledge, specific knowledge would you pass on from your experience working in this field for so long? I, I, the, the biggest thing is that it's early. Everybody feels that it's late. I remember when I started, I, I started paying attention to this in 2011. I quit my job in 2014, and I was wondering if I was too late. A lot of people in the ecosystem at that moment in time thought maybe it was too late, but it ended up being that we were early. We were early then, and in 2017, people thought it was too late. I remember talking to somebody a year ago when I was saying, look at Bitcoin, look at this technology, look how it's going to change the world, and the person said, I, I'm too late. And Bitcoin at that moment in time was $13,000. And so we are early and there is so much opportunity here to build. And for anybody to jump in and start building and making these systems easy, making it easy for developers to publish applications, making it easy for consumers to use applications. These are problems that have not been solved yet. And so that we're, we are early and I'm excited for everybody to come and, and join us and, and start building because we got to build as fast as we can. Great. Awesome. That wraps it up. Thank you so much for joining us, JP. And uh, thank you everyone for listening and asking your questions. Thank Good you, everybody. Time. Appreciate it. Thank you so much for joining us. Have a great day. Bye. Thank you.